Merry Christmas, everybody, and welcome to our Legacy Online Family Worship Service. We're so glad that you guys are connecting with us online today, and I trust that this is going to be a blessing to you and your family. So y'all get comfortable for just a few moments, and I want to speak to you on the title of uh, the wise men and being committed even when it costs us something. We've been right in the middle of this, this Christmas series called Convinced or Committed, and We've been trying to ask ourselves the hard question of, God, is there areas in my life that you'd like for me to commit at a deeper level? If the truth be known, all of us have something. God's dealing with us on. He's wanting us to commit at a deeper level for this area or that. And, and we get real nervous about that. But I think if we all searched our hearts deep down, we know that when God calls us deeper like that, it's because he's got something so much greater. And so I just want this message, this final message for this series today, uh, to just be an encouragement to you that you can allow God to make the shifts and changes in your life that He wants to make and it's going to be so much better for you on the other side of it. So uh, let's all go together to Matthew chapter number 2 and I want to read to you the first uh, 11 verses out of that and just a kind of a quick recap as you're, as you're getting your Bibles and going there do you remember the first week we talked about Joseph and we talked about he was he, he needed some kind of revelation uh, to commit to God at a deep level and, and really to commit to what he had for his life and God revealed himself so powerfully to Joseph that he changed the direction of his life. Sometimes we need that. And if you missed that sermon, uh, go back and watch it. Uh, we all need those moments with God that are so profound and so powerful that they change everything. And then in week two of the series, we talked about Simeon and Anna and how that they committed to God until consolation. They committed until he showed up. And that was a lifelong process for them. And, and for us, it, it will be the same as well. It's a lifelong journey. And uh, so that was a great encouragement to a lot of people. And last week, we talked about the shepherds and how they were committed to sharing the good news. So we want to be that church that shines the light of Christ in a dark world even when it costs us something. But today, we're going to finish out this series with the wise men in Matthew chapter number 2, or the NIV that I'll be reading out of this morning calls them Magi. And so many think there were three kings. Uh, many refer to them as wise men. I would say that would probably be how I would describe them as wise men. They traveled a long way and, and sacrificed a lot just to find the baby Jesus, the savior of the world, and to worship him. They were super committed, and they're a great example to us this morning of the level of commitment that God requires out of us as well. So, so let's read it together, and let's talk for just a few moments about being committed even when it costs us something. Starting in verse 1, the scripture says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. And then King Herod heard this, and he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the peoples and chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Christ to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judah, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. In verse 7 it says, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. So we see here that, that Herod had an agenda. We know that he had an agenda. We know as the story goes on that he would be solely responsible for murdering uh, all the Jewish children age two and under. And so, so it was a terrible situation uh, here. And thankfully, the wise men were wise in the fact that they listened to God and didn't go back and report uh, exactly what Herod had wanted them to. But let's finish it out here in verse 9. It says, After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense, or frankincense, some translations say, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So you got these men who really did sacrifice a lot. There's a, there's a lot of uh, different thought processes on how far they traveled, how long it took them, you know, how much they brought with them. And it, either way it goes, it was a very strenuous, very, very difficult journey. And they did it and they went through it and they sacrificed of themselves so that they could worship the newborn king. What a level, what a commitment that these men had. And it just challenges all of us today to go to a deeper level as well. See, when you worship, it's going to cost something. When you worship God with, with a real worship, in spirit and in truth, with a, a true worship, typically it always costs you something. To lay down your life for Christ, inevitably, is going to eventually cost you something. But Jesus is worth it. And these wise men, they, they realized that and they brought all these gifts and they laid down this, this gold, this frankincense and this myrrh and, and they sacrificed of themselves, them their time, their resources. And potentially they could have even sacrificed their lives uh, if Herod would have gotten a hold of them. So, so it was a big deal what they did to worship God. Friend, at times in life, it's just gonna cost us, but we could never outgive God. And as we lay down our life, God always gives back to us more than what we could ever even ask or think. Here recently, I uh, most of you know me, you know I'm an avid deer hunter. And I went and I, I took a couple of deer and uh, I, as I, I, I was in a rush to, to get back to, to Hot Springs, I was out of town. And uh, so I just dropped them off at a local processor there. Well, this processor was supposedly one that they had the best summer sausage around. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna drop them off over there and. I let them clean both of these deer and you know I didn't think it would I thought it would maybe be expensive but I really wasn't sure I just dropped them off and I told them hey would you just clean one and just turn the other one into summer sausage well they did and uh, about a week later they called me and they said sir we've got your meat ready to go you need to come by and pick it up and and I said okay and then she, she said well uh, it's gonna be four hundred dollars I said, $400, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it was gonna cost me that much. And she went back through the bill with me and she told me, she said, well, yes, sir. She said, you know, you had one whole deer turned into summer sausage and that was a lot of deer meat. And so I thought, wow, okay, well, I guess I really didn't count the cost before I made the decision. And a lot of times, friend, it's the same way with our walk with Christ. You know, we, we, we love the story of Christmas and, and the story of, of Easter where he's risen from the grave and what a powerful story that is. And we love all of that and we love all the benefits of, of Christianity. But sometimes, like, like I received in that phone call, we realize, man, this really may cost me more than what I was originally wanting to pay. But just like in my situation, I'll go pick that deer meat up, I'll give them their $400, and I'll enjoy that meat hopefully for the next year. Well, in your walk with Christ, friend, sometimes, listen, you lay down what you feel like in that moment might be more than what you wanted to give. But I can tell you this, as you get on the other side of it and you look back on it, you'll realize that that price was small in comparison, small in comparison to what God gave back to you for that. So let's talk about these wise men for just a couple more moments. These wise men, they brought gold, they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh. And all of these were symbolic of something. Gold was symbolic of kingship. Uh, frankincense was symbolic of worship. And myrrh was symbolic uh, of, of burial. It was, a, it was a, a perfume that was brought and put on bodies to, to give a fragrance to the bodies before uh, they were buried. And so they were proclaiming that Jesus had come to be the Messiah and to lay down his life, but there's symbolism in all of those gifts that they brought. For those of you who were able to come and were fortunate enough to get one of the uh, ornaments uh, that we gave out for, for our Legacy Church 2022 uh, Christmas ornament, uh, you'll notice the color of that is gold. And so our prayer and our hope is, as you are hanging those on your tree right now, or as you've already done so, 
that every time you look up and you see that Legacy Church ornament, the gold color on it, I pray that that would remind you of the kingship of Christ. Just like from this story, just the symbolism of this story, I pray that it would, it would speak to you and speak to your family as well. This is just a simple little gold ornament with legacy on the front of it. But sometimes it's the simple things that can really, it could represent something for us. And I just, I pray that that would, that would represent that for you, that it would remind you of your wonderful church family, but also of your wonderful savior that came and he's a king and he left his kingdom to come to this lowly, busted, broken earth so that you might have life. So if you haven't already, I want you to go and I want you to hang this on your Christmas tree and I want it to be a reminder to you as you see that gold color that the king that you serve loves you so much that he came and he gave his life for you. And I want you to always be reminded of that. Also being reminded of the frankincense and the fact that He's worthy because just because of that reason right there. He is worthy of our worship because he is a king. Uh, you know, he's not just any king. He's a good king and he's worthy of our worship. But lastly, I want to talk to you for a moment about that, that myrrh, that he, had, he came with a purpose. He came to lay down his life. He knew it would cost him. He knew it would cost him his life. The price of redemption would cost him his life and he was the only one who could do it and he knew that and he chose to come and he chose to lay down his life for you and for me and so we're getting ready to take communion so if if you were at church and you were able to get the emblems from church you want to go ahead and get those out and prepare those as a family to receive communion uh, if you don't have them it's as easy run into the kitchen real quick pause this video go in there and grab you some crackers and some juice or something of that nature and, and prepare yourself to receive communion. And as you do that, I want to go ahead and read uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians. I want to read to you out of uh, chapter number 11. And the scripture tells us, as we get ready to receive communion this morning, and starting in verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So right now, I want you to take those emblems, and I'd like for you to just go ahead and, and open them up take the wafer in your hand and get the, the juice ready to drink. And I want you to take time as a family right now. Take time with the friends that are around you and receive communion together. And you could pause this video and just take time to just do that together as a family. Take the bread first and then the cup and just stop to reflect and to thank God. Thank God that He came to this earth as a conquering King. He came to conquer sin, death, hell, the grave. He conquered all of that for you and for me. So reflect on those things. Reflect on his suffering, what he went through at the cross, just so that we could have life. Receive communion right now together. Well, I trust that was a precious time with you and your family. And uh, I just pray that God would give you guys a great, great Christmas day. I know many of you have got traveling to do, you've got food to eat, you've got family and friends to see, you've got uh, all these great Christmas gifts to go and to enjoy. And I just pray that you guys would have a wonderful Christmas. We wanna invite you to come back next uh, in the house next next week uh, on, on New Year's Day. We're gonna have two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. 
And we're going to start the new year off right. We're going to have the whole family together in the sanctuary for our Worship Together family service. And we want to invite you to be there. I know many of you probably just made a deeper commitment to serve God or to turn something over and surrender to God in one area of your life. What better way to solidify that commitment than to be in the house of God with the family of God next week? Hey, listen. If you enjoyed this today, or if you if you if you gave your life to Christ, maybe maybe today just watching this, you've decided to commit yourself, commit your life to Christ. If you if you've done that, let us know. Drop us a comment. Reach out to us. Let us know. We want to follow up with you. We want to be a part of your church family. We believe in you, and we believe in the destiny that God has uh, for your life. And so, reach out to us and let us know if we can serve you in any way. Legacy family, it's been a privilege to join with you in your living room or wherever you're watching this from on Christmas morning. And I just pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. We hope to see you guys again next week in the house at Legacy Church. Y'all have a good one.